Hello and welcome! In this video, I'll show you how I painted this colorful watercolor zebra, so let's get started. First, I want to let you know that the full version of this project is my newest Skillshare class, Paint a Watercolor Zebra Using Inspiration from the Color Wheel. In this class, I demonstrate how to use the color wheel tool to plan and paint a subject using vibrant and harmonious color palettes and how to mix your complementary colors with watercolors. I include a recommended supplies list, a printable outline, and support along the way for any questions or comments you may have. If you're not a current member of Skillshare, just click on the link in the video description and you'll get one free month of access to all the courses on the platform, which include topics from business to cooking and lots of art classes, including this one. So just click on the link to enjoy all that Skillshare has to offer. Okay, now on to the painting. For this project, I used four bright, vibrant, and transparent cool colors. For the purple, I'm using alizarin red and phthalo blue, and for the green, I'm using aqua green and Hansa yellow. I'm looking closely at my reference photo because it gets confusing on which are the stripes and which are the whites. Since I'm starting with green, which is the lighter of the colors and will eventually be the whites, my eyes play tricks on me since it's contrasted against the white paper and I have to remember that the white paper will be where the purple goes. I'm also looking closely at my reference photo because I do want to pay attention to shadows and highlights. The zebra's back is lighter than towards the belly, so I'm shifting the value at the top by adding more water to the green mixture. You can see that by paying attention to the light and shadow areas, it helps to give the zebra more of a three-dimensional appearance. Moving along to the head of the zebra, I'm repeating the same process with the turquoise and green, painting the stripes wet into wet. At this stage, the greens and blues seem to be too intense to take the place of white, but once the deeper purple stripes are added, it will make more sense visually. Don't be afraid to go a little bold with your application of color. I'm starting on the mane by wetting each section, then adding the greens. I'm making the part of the mane closest to the neck the lightest in value, and adding the deeper blue-green towards the top. And then after I add all this light green, I use my smaller brush to add the deeper color, and this is still wet into wet. I am using small strokes to paint onto the dry areas of the paper to get distinct brush lines to look like the individual hair clumps then dragging the brush stroke either into or out of the wet area to let the darker color softly blend with the light green. Now just like I started with the green, I'm going to paint the purple stripes wet into wet, starting on the left side of the paper. Once this deeper color is on the paper, it makes the green look so much lighter and appears to be more of a tinted white color than a bright green. Keep studying your reference photo so you know where to add the deeper shadows and the lighter highlights to give your subject dimension and contour. For painting the muzzle, I need to make sure the stripes flow into the area without hard edges. So I wet it first, then paint the stripes right into the muzzle. I use the lighter shade of pinkish purple to paint the muzzle area. I left the chin dry since there's a definite separation between the top of the muzzle and the chin, and that will get painted later. Continuing with the mane, I'm using my small brush and painting little strokes at the top of the mane onto dry paper to create the individual clumps of hair. And I'm also dragging it into the dried areas of the green mane sections for some texture. For the inside of the ears, I make the purple a little bit lighter and I use my small brush just to do some negative painting, which means I'm painting the white ear fur by painting around it in these strokes of dark color. On the eye, I'm using a bit of white gouache to paint a highlight.
And this is when I realized that the green on the mane needs to be a little darker on the bottom where it meets the neck. So I add some more water to paint another glaze of color wet into wet in these sections. Lastly, I'm using some more purple to paint some light brush strokes on dry paper for the front of the mane between the ears to give a little more fur detail. And the zebra is done. Don't forget, if you would like to watch the full length version where I show how to use the color wheel to find color inspiration and demonstrate each step of the painting process, make sure to click the link in the video description to get your first free month of Skillshare. Thank you for joining me and I will see you next time.